Well, the security analyst, Arash Aramesh, joins me live now from San Francisco. Good to see you, Arash. Um, so many people are saying that um, they're not going to let the terrorists win. But can we expect a backlash against Islam? Well, let's, uh, let's qualify that statement. No, a backlash against Islam. Islam is a, a religion. It's, it's one of the world's largest religions. It's, uh, if, if a group of fringe elements uh, carry out an attack in the name of Christianity, uh, we certainly hope not to see a backlash against Christianity. But uh, we have to acknowledge that there is an ongoing conflict going on even within Islam. There is this uh, very harsh interpretation of Islam uh, that is very bloodthirsty and that carries out some of the most heinous crimes not just only against Europeans and Westerners, but particularly against Muslims. The, most of the victims of ISIS and Boko Haram and the Taliban in Pakistan and Afghanistan have been Muslims. But what is important here is not to allow those who are against free speech, who are against freedom of expression, who are against uh, our right to be able to choose our lifestyles and our course of lives to dictate uh, self-censorship to dictate uh, what we have to do and what we have to choose and what we have to eat and not and so forth, so on and so forth. So, uh, yes, there is going to be some sort of reaction to what happened. But what I'd like to see is a global coalition or a global effort to address some of these problems from problems from the ground up, issues that are cons that that are that are the source that are the sources of you know uh, terrorism, issues such as poverty issues such as uh, a lot of money that comes from the Middle East and funds some radical madrasas and schools all across the world, issues such as the Syrian civil war or the ongoing conflict in Iraq or the unfortunately not very much covered story of these massacres that happened in, in Nigeria with, through Boko Haram or the Ash-Shabaab in Somalia. So it's not just one or two places, but it does hurt when you see the sort of the cradle of free speech, you know, Paris. And in a, in a, in a cartoon, you know, in a, in a magazine uh, that for the most part is very immigrant friendly, these guys were, you know, leftists, it gets attacked and when free speech comes under attack. Arash, that's all very well. And at an intellectual governmental level, that rhetoric is true. That is ideally what the world would like to see. But human nature is very tribal. What the government wants to see and how people on the street are going to react is very, very different. What's actually happening and being said in the United States, for example, because there was a lot of backlash at the fact that Mr. Obama was not in Paris on that front line linking arms. You know, I, I'm not sure what President Obama's schedule looks like these days, but if I were him and I weren't on vacation or if I was not expecting some important meeting, I probably would have gone there. I saw the front line. You know, if you, you saw Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the Palestinian Authority, you saw Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli prime minister, Davut Oglu of Turkey showed up, the prime minister, a whole host of about 40 uh, leaders from 40 different countries showed up. Um, I uh, wish the president had sent at least a high-level high delegation, maybe the vice president. But, you know, uh, that doesn't mean that he does not support uh, the actions of the French government and he does not share the grief of the French people in this tragedy. I think the president, regardless of our party affiliation, Republican or Democrat, I think the president uh, has, a commit, has been very committed to fighting this issue of global terror. Uh, he, 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 has, he has committed resources, money, uh, as soldiers and uh, equipment to fighting terror in Yemen, in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Somalia, you name it, Iraq and Syria. Can he do more? Absolutely. He can do much more. Uh, but again, um, I, I don't think just by not having flown to Paris, and perhaps maybe if he'd gone to Paris, he would have taken that you know, spotlight away from what we should have really focused on, which was the sacrifice of, of these 12 individuals, the police, the French police officer got shot and the cartoonist and, and the idea of this assault on, on free speech. But I'd like to put that aside for a second. The question is, what are we going to do next? We have real issues. Perhaps this was a wake up call for France and for Europe to, to realize that there is this ongoing threat 
And this threat, which is posed by a very small minority, but this is a very vocal, very active minority, it's a real threat and has to be dealt with on, on, on many levels, you know, on a counterterrorism level, on a counterintelligence level, on a law enforcement level, on a political level, and perhaps down the road, on a global level, what we can have a much better relationship in certain countries and produce better outcomes. Arash, as ever, thank you very much.